of a quiet group. I can't be the only one talking this week. <laughs> good, I'm glad that you're good, Mel. You're up in Seattle, that's awesome. I love that we're hitting up with those other states. For a long time, we just hit our local area and that's great, but I love that we're spreading out a little bit. Well, I'm excited for today. We have a huge group registered for this and some of them register so they can get the replay. Where in Southern California? I used to live in Southern California. I used to live in Newport. Hi, May. Uh, well, I live in Yucaipa. Oh, awesome. I know where that is. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, Newport Beach was um, belongs to Orange County and I in San Bernardino County. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. good. Very, very cool. Mm -hmm. Turn my heater off, it's starting to get warm. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very cool. So what brought you to this class? Why did you choose to take this class? Oh, well, actually, uh, with all this situation that is what we are facing, I think um, I'm really good uh, communicating through Google or, or our additional uh, platforms, but there's still always there's something else that we need to learn, right? I mean, when we have the opportunity, right? Well, I just want to <laughs> grab it, right? To keep right. learning and to be a, bit, a little more proficiency in what we need to do the best right now. That's so smart. And, and all honestly, as of January 1, Google changed so much of their platform and so much of how they're, they're operating things. And so um, I even am learning new things. And so as I do this presentation, it's actually a new one uh, that's changed from the old presentation I did in December. And so I'm going through and I'm like, oh my goodness, I hope I remember all this information. Uh, because so much is changing with even with Google in reaction to everybody working online and trying to be more flexible um, and creating the system. So uh, yeah, constantly learning is so important. Yeah. So we need to keep walking beside the new technology. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, Mel, you asked if there is a good uh, web page to read the summary of these changes. Um, there's not one exclusive page to read a summary of these changes, but uh, Google has been really, really good to update the individual pages for the individual apps uh, that, uh, that we're making the changes on. As far as um, the biggest change is getting, um, basically, uh, we no longer call it Google Suites or G Suites, as most people are, are used to it. It's called the Google Work, uh, Workplace. And um, that's a change. Also, uh, what's available on the what they're calling the commerce um, free uh, applications and things like that has been is, is a little more limited uh, so that uh, we get and I don't know all the details behind why they're, they're limiting that a little bit more. Uh, but they are limiting that a little bit more. Um, a lot of those changes are not going to go into effect until March 31st. Um, as well as uh, Google Meets um, that we're gonna go over in detail today. Um, some changes to that um, as far as what's available on the free platform versus the paid platform, uh, things like that. So they're just kind of making some adjustments to hopefully be a little more, uh, more remote friendly is what is what the concept is. And then also a lot of uh, businesses and jobs and things like that have gone to be more um, remote. And so they're making those adjustments within their platforms to be more friendly for the, the businesses that choose to be um, a Google account. Um, the cool part about that is they're being flexible. Um, when you sign up for Google, a lot of people assume that you have to have a Google 
uh, email, which is not true, actually. We'll talk about that a little bit today as well. Um, you can sign up and have um, a different, in fact, businesses, a lot of business accounts with their emails specific to their business are actually um, Gmail accounts. They've just uh, got a, the specific platform to match that on the back end of that. So. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I'm a big proponent of getting started on time because I know that your guys' time is, is very valuable. Um, if uh, we have a small enough group right now, uh, we had about 30 people register. So I anticipate people will be getting on slowly. I also know that people um, like to get the replay because 9 a.m. on a Monday morning is sometimes very difficult for people to get on. And so uh, I, did, I do uh, send out the replay upon request. On that, we also upload it to our YouTube channel so um, that uh, if you would like to see it again, you can always catch any of our um, Google uh, videos and our Google classes on our YouTube channel, which is really awesome. So uh, my name is Megan McFall. I'm the director of the Small Business Development Center here in Blanding, Utah. Um, I work on a cooperative agreement between Utah State University and the SBA, uh, which is uh, really, really cool because I get to work with a bunch of small businesses and help them develop and grow, which is exciting for me because I am actually, um, for lack of a better term, a serial entrepreneur. Um, I uh, build businesses and sell them and then move on to the next one because the build phase is my uh, favorite, favorite aspect of, of business. And I don't know why that has been. It's the hardest one, but I, I love that thrill of the build. So uh, this job is actually perfect for me because of that. Uh, COVID has really kind of changed how we do business. And so that's one of the reasons why I started teaching with uh, Grow with Google and be able to share that expertise um, and help businesses switch online. As we got going, we realized that those businesses are hiring people um, to work remotely. And so we wanted to make sure that we are training the job searchers and those that want the workforce development on those same issues. So I'm um, really excited to be able to share with you today. Grow with Google is a new platform with Google to uh, teach people their platforms and how to be more flexible with their platforms. They also have more resources at g.co um, and you can uh, look at uh, everything from small business to remote work to, to how to use Google to search for jobs. Um, our personal uh, small business development center has uh, classes every Monday morning at 9 a.m. and you can catch that entire schedule on our Eventbrite page. So go ahead and look that. I wanted to thank our co-host today, which is the uh, Rural Online Initiative Program at Utah State University Extension. We appreciate their backup. Um, if you have taken the uh, the Masters of Online, uh, Remote Online, uh, go ahead and put that in the comments. I like to see, I always like to see how many people have taken that course. I took it last October and I'm going to be honest, I've worked on uh, remote for years with businesses and things like that and I thought I was really good. And it taught me a lot of things. So if you have not taken that course and you work online, highly encourage that you do that because they go through all kinds of incredible things, teach you how to work with teams, teach you how to work with your customers, um, and then go through the details on the back end. It's really amazing. Encourage you to go ahead um, and check that out at remoteworkcertificate.com. So I'm going to go ahead and get started today if I can get my uh, PowerPoint to work with us. So one thing I want to talk about real quickly <laughs> As working remotely, uh, we tend to have, um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, when COVID first happened and I went into uh, to quarantine and started working specifically from home, before then I, I really enjoy working from an office and being around people. Um, and uh, I, I, I get um, excited to work with my agents and things like that. So when we went on quarantine, it was very difficult for me initially. So the, about the first two weeks of quarantine, um, I, my schedule went completely out the window. I slept in. Um, I didn't go to the gym. I didn't work out. Um, my, my meal schedule was all over the place. And what I found out is that I was not as productive as I could have been, would have been, should have been um, if I would have had kept my original schedule. So when you're working remotely, I encourage you guys to keep your routine. So if you have a routine that you do every day, for example, uh, let me send that to voicemail real quick. Sorry about that. Um, so if you have a routine, if you normally get up and go to the gym and then shower and eat breakfast, keep that same schedule. Um, you will find that those same schedules, those same practices that you do, that keeping that normalcy will make you more productive um, in your everyday 
um, and as you work from home, um, then if you just go willy nilly like I did, um, and uh, it makes a big difference. The other mistake that I did is I didn't have a dedicated workspace. Um, my laptop might have been up next to my bed, so I wake, woke up, made, might have just uh, sat in the bed in my pajamas all day, right? And uh, got on my laptop and, and started working again. Um, I noticed that that infected my sleep. I wasn't sleeping as well as I normally did, and and uh, I realized somebody said, well, you know, you kind of you know just need to keep your bedroom just for sleep. And I was like, oh, I guess that would be a big problem because I was working from my bed. So make sure you keep a dedicated workspace, even if you don't have a home office that you can use for that. Um, I was lucky enough that I did. Uh, however, uh, if you just have to set it up at the table uh, and clean it up every day when you're done, have a dedicated workspace that you go to, um, the same chair every day, so that when you go there, your mind is ready to work. You'll start training your mind that this is office, this is time to work, and you're ready to go. The next thing we talked about is having um, that kind of routine, that set schedule. Make sure you schedule yourself in lunches and breaks. We're not made to sit in an office or sit at a desk in front of a computer for eight hours straight. Um, we're our attention span and our optimal um, Productivity is actually only 90 minutes to two hours before we really need to take about a 10 minute break. So make sure you're scheduling that in so that you can stay the most productive. Um, it might be really nice to step outside for 10 minutes, take a little walk around the block and then come back, um, grab maybe a little bit, uh, something to eat and then go back to work. You'll find that you are working much more productively. The ideas and things like that that you're working on will come a little smoother to you as well. The next thing is um, make sure you have all the tools that you need. When you go into an office, you have all of the tools that you need to set up to be productive um, in your work, right? Whether it be staplers and, and pens and printers and things like that, we have all those things in our office. And so we don't have to work or make create workarounds and, and items. Make sure you have all the tools that you need. If you need a stapler, go get a stapler. Um, the small little things will make the biggest difference as you're trying to set yourself up for success uh, to work remotely. The next thing is, is make sure you create a daily to-do list and do that at the end of the day for the following day. Um, you will be able to check things off as you go throughout the day. So again, feeling much more accomplished and productive. But at the end of the day, if you create your to-do list for the following morning, you'll get your day off much quicker um, the following morning. But you can also go and review the day and ensure that you're ready to go um, and have accomplished everything that you need to do. Um, the next thing is to give yourself and your coworkers a bit of grace. We're all making transitions. We're working from home. We have dogs. We have kids, whatever that might be. And things are going to happen. You're going to hear dogs bark in the back of video conferencing. Um, kids will come in and think that they need to be right in the middle of the video. And when, no matter how professional we want to be, uh, there is a, a commercial out right now where the mom's pouring coffee and hiding, you know, the kid that's trying to make, you know, faces in the video. Um, that's going to happen and give a grace. Uh, things will happen for you yourself as well and, and your co co-workers. It's just, it's one of those funny things. I do think that YouTube has a bunch of compilations of really funny video work conferencing things. They're hilarious. I enjoy watching them. I don't know why. Um, probably because I do so many videos and so many workshops like this that I have had so many of that, so much of that happen to myself that it is funny. And if you use those as learning experiences, laugh it off and enjoy and go on to the rest of your day. Um, the next would be um, to make sure you have um, a little bit of work-life balance. And part of that is when you're at work, then work. But when you're not at work, um, when you work remotely, it's really easy to be at work all the time. Um, when you're not at work, then don't work close it up and be done for the day. Um, a lot, it's really, really hard for us um, when we're working remotely as to be working all the time and feel like we need to work all the time. And we hear those, those emails come in or we have a few extra minutes, we can check on this one thing. Don't do that because then you will get burnout. Make sure that you have your set hours. These are the hours that I'm going to work. And then the other hours, you're home, you're with your family. You, it's, it's like you, you've left the office. Close it up, be done for the day and be with your family. Um, and those are really, really important aspects of working remotely, okay? 
So our agenda today, um, we're really excited to introduce some changes to Google um, and to go over some really important uh, things with Google that will make a big difference in your remote work. Uh, I ask you to bear with me. They've changed the presentation from the last time that I, uh, uh, I taught this and presented this. And so if uh, I get a little hung up, I apologize. And I hope that uh, we're able to, to go through this quite quickly. We're gonna first talk about Google Meets and help you communicate from anywhere. Uh, we're also gonna talk about Google calendars and how to schedule that, how to set that up with Google Meets, but also how to keep your schedule in line. And then last but not least, we're gonna talk about collaborating from anywhere because when you're working remotely, you're going to work on teams or work with customers at one point or another and having that ability to collaborate with them from anywhere is gonna be really, really important. And then last but not least, we're gonna recap and we're talking about resources. And those resources will help you identify the changes that Google has made now that uh, G Suite has moved over to uh, Google Workplace, um, sorry, Workspace, and uh, be able to make those, those adjustments accordingly as well. So we're going to start out here um, on this, uh, this slide. It's showing you how to log into your Google accounts. You're going to need to have a Google account if you don't already have one. Um, Google essentially has an option to have a free account. Um, you get a free Google email plus access to um, the different applications that goes with that free uh, Google account. You can go to accounts.google.com backslash sign up and sign up there, or you can create an account from the sign-in sheet um, right here. So that's essentially, sorry guys. I have a feeling that somebody trying to get on the uh, the webinar. Anyway, so I need you to go and if you are following along and, and, and doing this at the same time, go ahead and sign into your Google Suites now. If you don't have, um, sorry, your Google account, I gotta quit. I'm gonna, it's gonna take me a while to get out of that habit. Um, sign into your Google account now. If you don't have one, feel free to sign up for one. It doesn't take very much time um, and you can uh, sign up for one really, really quickly. We're excited. Um, to be able to share this information and have you have access to that. So important things to, uh, to do when you're working remotely, right, is to communicate from anywhere. One of those aspects is going to be to um, do video chat or video calls, similar to what we're doing right now. We can uh, talk with anybody anywhere, regardless of where they are in the world, which is really, really neat. And Google's application for that is actually Google Meets. Uh, Google Meets is an application that can be used from any digital device, your phone, tablet, um, or a computer, and uh, be able to uh, communicate and video chat with friends, families, and in this case, our coworkers, right? So when we um, transition into um, Google Meets, it's really a, a fun program. Uh, there are some changes that are get, that are happening, and I'll go over um, those changes in the next slide. Um, but when you want to host a meeting, you can host a meeting for up to 250 people on the free account. Um, you can record meetings, and all meetings um, recorded, they download to actually your Google Drive so that it's easy and accessible from anywhere. Um, a lot of people wonder why uh, we would want different reasons why you would want to record a meeting. Um, maybe you're doing a training, um, and you want to have a copy of that for people to watch later. Um, if you're like me, like this this uh, this webinar that we're recording, um, I put all those up on YouTube. That's another option that you can do is, is upload those, um, whether you're doing that in a private setting or an open um, to the public setting. So. Um, all of the meetings are encrypted. Uh, security is going to be really, really huge around a remote work. And it's one of those things that has been a big issue in the public uh, to make sure that all of your meetings are security and what platform you're using and different things like that. So just so that you're aware, all meetings um, with Google Meets are encrypted, which is really important. Okay. On this slide, we're going over the difference between um, the paid plans and then the uh, and the, the, sorry, the free plan and the paid plan. If you're on a free plan, you can have up to 100 guests um, on your video chat with you. Um, the maximum is 24 hours that you can run um, a one session. Um, you have unlimited number of meetings and then the price is obviously for free. Uh, the paid plans, you can have up to 250 people um, on your, uh, your video at the same time. Um, again, 24 hours is the maximum you can be on at one time. And then and um, if you have, 
you have an unlimited number of meetings. And then on the paid plan, they start at $6 a month, which is extremely reasonable um, and go up from there depending on the size um, and what you have going on with your people. So um, when you uh, have uh, Google Meets, uh, you uh, feel more connected with your, uh, with your coworkers um, that you're working remotely to. You can get Meet on Google Meets and do your brainstorming with your team. If you're working on an event or anything like that, then it's a great way to come together. Um, and then you can schedule more um, remote you can schedule uh, remote consultations with clients, which is really important, especially when you own your own business like I do, um, and you're working with clients from a distance to be able to have that opportunity to schedule remote. And then um, like we're doing right now, you can also host online classes um, and be able to, to teach um, that way as well. So very cool. So uh, the really neat part about Google Meets uh, and your Google Calendar, which comes with your, uh, the free account as well, is that they are integrated together. Uh, so that you can actually schedule a Google Meets um, appointment straight from your calendar or vice versa, which is really neat, really cool. So let's uh, talk about the different options in using Google Meets and scheduling an appointment. So you can go to meets.google.com um, and get into your Google Meets account as long as you're logged into your uh, Google Drive or your Google account. You can also go into log into your account like we did before and go to the we call it the waffle up in the corner that shows all your apps and there'll be a button there that shows the little camera icon that you can go in and get access to it from there. Um, and then uh, we talked about just a minute ago is you can access or schedule an appointment from your calendar as well. So there's three different options. Option one, we're going to talk about going straight to Google Meets and scheduling an appointment. So if you go straight straight to Google Meets. This is the screen that will come up for you. On the left hand side, it'll say new meeting. And on that new meeting is where you can schedule your new meeting, invite your people, things like that. On the right hand side, we'll have a list of all your currently scheduled meetings um, and essentially the time that it starts and the name of that meeting so that you can know um, what you have coming up. It's a neat little aspect um, and I really enjoy having that so that I don't double book myself because I've done that before and it's not good. Okay, option number two is using actually your Google Calendar. So I don't know about you guys, um, I am not a fully digital person. I actually still have a paper planner. I'm still kind of, you know, I have to see it on paper. Um, but I still schedule all of my meetings and things like that through a digital calendar so that um, as uh, clients want to book with me, they can actually see when I'm busy and when I'm available as well. So I do the double thing. Um, but having the ability to schedule with a client and putting that, that uh, digital meeting right onto that is so nice if you've ever had had to do the copy and paste thing and schedule it different places. It's uh, it's horrible. So having the ability to schedule it together is important. So if you go into your Google Calendar and you're going to go in and schedule your event ju just like you would normally schedule your event, right? So you put in the title, the time, the date, the recipient's um, email um, that you're going to invite to that. And then there's a button that says add Google or add Google Meets video conferencing. If you do that, it'll automatically create that video, create that link for you, put it on your Meets calendar, or Meets schedule, um, and then create that, that uh, encryption for you to send out with that Meet, which is really, really, really nice aspect. If you have the upgraded um, version of the Google Workspace, then um, you will have the option to join by phone. So that is one of the changes, one of the differences, you will have the option to join by phone with the Google Workspace um, Meets account um, versus the other one. So that's one of the changes that, that we can look forward to. But this screenshot shows you what that looks like in the email or in the invite. It'll give you, you can join by phone numbers and then give the list of phone numbers depending on area. Okay, so when that Google Meet comes up um, and you are creating that, you can also go down to the bottom and select more options. That'll give you more options for your Google Meeting um, to be able to make adjustments to that. Um, and depending on the level of your memberships will depend on the level of options that are available in there.
Okay, uh, when you send out a meeting invite through Google, this is what it looks like. The screenshot is what it looks like. If you're using Google Meets, it'll have under the location um, where the link for your guests to go to, they're able to click on that and bring that right up. Um, if they're on a computer, which is really important. I don't know, have you ever had to uh, like download an entire program and things like that in order to get on a, a conference call or a webinar? Um, the cool part about Google Meets is that's not an issue here. Um, if you do uh, use it on a device like a tablet or a phone, you will, there is the application that is needed. So um, that is um, what the uh, invite looks like. So uh, when you're ready to join your meeting, you can either go to the Google Meets, um, actualmeets.google.com and go there and join, uh, start up your meeting based on your schedule, or you can just go straight to your calendar open up the calendar event and then click join Google Meets and that will open up your Google Meets um, and you'll be able to, to get in from there. If you are the host of that Google Meets and the one of the people that you've invited into that meeting does not have a Google account, you will be required to allow access in to um, the Google Meet. So just be aware of, of that. It's similar to like a waiting room on Zoom or, or any of those other accounts. You will need to let your people in for that. Okay, so this is kind of what it looks like when you are joining a Google Meet. Um, you bring that up, it'll bring you to this page. It'll show you what your video is going to look like in case you need to make adjustments. Um, I always check my hair um, and uh, make sure that I don't have anything strange in the back of me. <laughs> because I don't want to have, I don't want to end up on one of those, those compilation videos that I enjoy watching so much, right? So this is what it looks like by phone and by computer. All you do is you make sure you're ready to go and then you click join. Um, you may have to wait again for the host to, to let you in if it's not your personal meeting. Um, and then once they let you in, it'll bring you in to, uh, into the meeting. So some Google Meets features. So this is kind of what it looks like if you have multiple people um, on camera. This is just kind of a nine picture uh, display, but obviously you can have many more than that. So uh, up in the right hand corner, you have a few options up here. Number one, it'll show you, um, it's got circled the, the chat feature is. It'll tell you um, if, if how many chats there are and you can pull that down and participate within that chat. It also tells you how many participants are there um, and then by name. Down at the bottom, right in the middle, it gives you your mute option option, your camera option, and then the red um, phone option is where you would hang up or where you would leave um, the meeting if you choose to leave the meeting. So um, really simple, really easy features uh, to use within Google Meets. The other option is if you are a presenter um, or you need to, to share something with the group, you can go through um, and hit present now and you have three different op options to present now. Number one, you can present your entire screen. Number two, you can um, just do a window. Like for me, I have two screens going on. That's why I keep looking over here. It's what you guys are seeing. Um, you can um, present just a window. And then number two, you can present a Chrome, um, a Chrome link. Is there something you need? Sorry about that, guys. Um, and so uh, that gives you different options that you're able to, to share at that point. Um, so if you have multiple screens going on, you want your notes in one screen, you can do that um, and just share um, the screen that you want to share. So um, I clicked mute. There we go. So the other option is we talked about recording. Recording um, is an important aspect. Um, I love to record, number one, so I can see what I'm doing wrong when I'm teaching. But number two, I like to upload to YouTube because we have so many people um, that have different schedules and varying schedules. I either need to send out a replay or I need to upload it to YouTube so people can go back and watch it later, right? And so um, I always record. Those recordings will go to your Google Drive. Um, so you will have access to it from any computer as long as you can log into your Google Drive account. Um, and that's a really, really neat. This also gives you um, all the other features and that is available through the three um, stack dots um, in the corner of that, uh, in the corner of that screen that you can see on that right hand side. So that is where those are available. 
So anytime you're doing a virtual meeting, here's some things that, to be thinking about. Number one, make sure you're in a good position. Think about what's in your background um, when your camera is on. Make sure that, again, I always check my hair because sometimes I get something crazy going on, right? Um, we don't want your hair sticking up. Uh, but I also check what's in my background and make sure that there's nothing distracting or nothing inappropriate. Have you ever gotten on a video call and somebody's had their lunch in the background and several cups and things like that? It's kind of distracting and pulls away from your video, make sure that you have what you want in that background. It might just be the corner of your room. It might be a really pretty wall, whatever you feel is appropriate in your background. I encourage people to keep their camera on because it will make you feel more connected and make the, per make the people within the meeting feel more connected with you at all as well. Um, we talked about background, create a neutral background um, that is not distracting away from the information that is being prepared um, and given. Uh, make sure sometimes external mics are better. Like I have this mic going on, um, but sometimes uh, actual computer mics are uh, don't necessarily pick up the, the, the sound that they need to pick up. So you might need a headset or to get an external mic to make sure your sound quality is up to par. Next, um, make sure if you're not speaking, mute your microphone. Um, have you ever been on a, a call where somebody and their husband walks in and they'll ask a question or something like that? And uh, things like that happen all the time as part of that giving that grace. But at the same time, do what you need to do to make sure that you can avoid a, some of those situations because some of them can be really funny and others can be really, really embarrassing. So do what you can to mitigate some of those situations. Um, the other thing is, is wear solid clothing. Um, make sure that it, when you have prints and things like that can take away. And if you're using the virtual backgrounds and stuff um, that you see a lot of people, those, co those colors and things will pull those backgrounds in over over there. Have you ever seen that? I've seen that a lot. Um, so wear a neutral one solid clothing so that uh, it doesn't do that. And stripes and patterns can be really dizzying um, to other people. So uh, just some, some, some pointers there. So the next thing we're going to talk about is collaborate from anywhere. Um, Google Tools allows people to collaborate from anywhere, which is really, really cool. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm a business owner. My business partner now lives uh, or lives up in Salt Lake City, which is about six hours away from me. Um, and we still run businesses, though we are still living um, within 30 minutes of each other. The reason and the way we can do that is we actually run everything off of uh, uh, off of Google. Um, we share drives. We can actually get on the same document and both be typing at the same time. If you're not used to doing that, it'll kind of freak you out the first time you do it because all of a sudden things will start showing up and she'll let you doing stuff. And the first few times we did it, it kind of freaked us out. But now we're getting to the point where like we wrote a grant last week the exact same way. She was on one section, I was on the other um, and, and we were able to do that. So having that ability is huge, especially when you're working on virtual teams or you're trying to show if client that you're working with some some information um, and that's the best way to do you're building it all at the same time so the applications that we're able to do um, to use on those kind of situations, number one um, is Google Sheets, which is uh, basically an Excel, uh, Google's version of Excel, a Google Docs, um, which is Google's version of, of Wind, uh, Word. The cool part about these is if we create these in Sheets and Docs on Google Drive, you can download them in the Microsoft version of them onto uh, your desktop. Or if you send them to a client, they can uh, download them on the Microsoft version. Um, on their desktop. So that's a really, really neat aspect um, of the Google um, system. She, or slides is uh, their version of PowerPoint. Google Drive is a cloud-based storage and that holds all of your documents. You can put everything from photos to your all your documents um, on that Google Drive. And again, it's shareable. We'll show you how to do that. You can put, um, there's Google Photos um, that is a really neat application uh, that we teach another class on. I could teach that, that it would literally Really take hours to go through all of that. Google Chrome is their search engine and then Gmail is their free email account, um, which is, is really cool. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go through Google Drive with you for a little bit. Um, I My favorite way to get to Google Drive is actually just to log into my account regularly, go to the waffle, and then click on the Google Drive um, button. If you've ever gone into this, uh, this little waffle that they call it, um, and you've noticed the applications have been all moved around, the reason is, is it actually puts the, uh, the applications into um, the order that you use them the most. So if you don't like 
like that, you can actually move those around and put those in the order that you prefer them. Um, and so most people don't know that they can do that. But if they're moving around and it's driving you crazy and you want a specific one in a specific location because that's where you're used to, move it there so that you, uh, you have that ability. So let's go ahead and log into our account. We're gonna go up to the waffle and we're gonna hit Google Drive. It's gonna, uh, the other cool part about Google Drive, this is a new slide, I apologize, <laughs> is that it's available on your phone. It's available through mobile apps. Um, so you can download the mobile app, then you have access to all of your files on the go. So the other neat part about that is that you can actually uh, create your files so that they are available offline. You have to do that while you still have internet access. So for example, when I write curriculum, um, I do a lot of teaching. Um, I did a lot of teaching in business and things like that before this job. But um, I would write curriculum. My favorite thing to write, place to write curriculum is actually um, in an airplane. Um, when I was flying, I did a lot of flying, a lot of travel. Um, but in an airplane, you don't generally have a lot of Wi-Fi access and stuff. So the, what I would do is I would make it, um, you have to go to your computer, make it available offline on your computer first. Then you have to go into whatever device that you're going to be using. Um, like for me, it was my tablet on, on flights because I have a full keyboard on my tablet and be able to um, to make it available offline on that as well. So there's a two step process, but it was really, really great to get on that flight. Once you're up in the air, you can use your devices and get on and write, um, write curriculum or write my books or whatever I was working on at the time. So really, really cool um, options there. So this is essentially a screenshot of kind of what um, your Google uh, Drive will look like once you have several files and things like that. Um, if you click on the Google Drive, it'll give you the three different options. Those are three different options that it's showing within that slide. Those are the different types of files that are available. Um, and um, it essentially shows you the the list of the stored documents within that. And then the icons are what type of document those are. So right there in that particular, it shows you a slides, a docs, and a PDF, um, for example, so that you're easily able to identify what type of document or what type of file is holding there. Um, those will also, your documents will also go with um, the, the, the last used, um, but you can set that by date, you can set that by name, you can make those adjustments as well, which is really, really cool. So the other thing is you have control over who sees your documents. Again, it's going over to that, that share um, aspect, that collaboration aspect. So we're going to use um, these two documents. For example, you can share these two documents. Um, in my uh, Digital Skills for Every Day, we actually actually talk about creating these different documents and sharing them um, with different people. You can share at different levels. So for example, we create a, an agenda for a meeting and we need to share that with everybody that goes to the meeting, but we don't want them to have any edit access. You can do that and share it with as many people as you want um, and do it as view only and then they can't make any edits. But say we have a budget and in that budget, we have to have the budget manager, the boss and say yourself because um, you're planning an event and you all need to have access to that, but you all need to be able to make edits to that so that you would add all three of those emails and you would give it editor access as it shows in within um, that box. You can also change that to say if you don't want somebody to make edits, they just can view it. Um, or just can make comments, then you make that, um, that adjustment on the editor access or on the access that they have available. And then that's the, the limit that they have. And you can do it at different levels for different people on the same document, which is really cool. So um, within this, we're gonna create a blank document and we're gonna use one of the templates. So uh, we're gonna go to Google Docs, click templates, and then they have an array of templates. So we're gonna create a meeting. Um, so it's gonna show you here how to do that. So if you go to the big plus sign over in the corner and then scroll down to where it says docs, you're gonna scroll, go down to the templates and then it'll give you the access to the templates that Google has created for you. Um, I personally am a big believer in using templates um, because it has all the formatting and everything that you need set up in that aspect and be able to do um, what you need to do within um, that, uh, that document without all of the, the editing and things like that, because sometimes that can take the most time. 
So one of the important aspects when you're using Google um, Drive is that you need to title and name your documents. Um, I don't know if you've ever like gotten into your, before I really knew that this was a thing when I first got my account, I would just open documents and write in them and wouldn't think about changing the name, right? Um, and so I had like 12 documents that were untitled document or untitled slides or untitled sheets, whatever I was working in. You need to go in and actually change the name. You just double click where it says untitled, change the name to whatever you want it to be called, um, and then it'll automatically save it once you click off of that. The cool part about Google um, is you will never be able to find a save button. It automatically saves everything. One of the questions we get all the time is, well, what if I decide that I didn't want those save changes? Well, it keeps a list of all of the, all the changes that have been made, and so that you have access to that and can go back and, and undo those. Uh, but the cool part is, is if you've ever written a report or anything like that and had your computer go down and have everything wiped, that is no longer an issue when you use Google. So um, the share button or the comment function, we're going to start with the comment function, is this square box with the ad in it. What you're going to do if you want to add just a comment, say you're reviewing a document for a friend, they shared a comment for a uh, shared a a file with you and you're reviewing a, com a document for either a coworker or a friend, it might be a resume, it might be a report that needs to go in. What you do is you highlight what you're commenting on. So as we see in the picture here, they highlighted an entire sentence. So what you do is you highlight that and then click that comment button and it'll over on the side will give you an option to comment on what is available. So if you want to do an open comment for everybody, you can just type in your comment at that point in time. If you want to do a personal comment for somebody, let's just say only one person needs to have that comment, you put, first put the plus sign or the at sign and you type in their email address and then you type in the comment and that gives ownership over that comment to the person that you want to have that comment. I hope that makes sense. Um, so you have two different ways that you can put comments. You can do open comment or direct it towards one person. It makes it really, really nice. You assign that, say one person just needs to take care of a different thing. Or let's say we're to have a to-do list. This is my favorite aspect about this. If I'm working on a big project remotely and there's a to-do list and I have to assign say 12 different agents to 12 different things, then I can create a to-do list here, add them all to the document and then create a comment to each one and maybe do a due date or maybe, hey, can you give me an update on all this and put it directly to each individual um, agent so that I can get my feedback. They know what's going on. They're going to get an email um, saying, hey, you've got a new comment, you need to check it out. So I know that they got a notification. All of those things are going into place um, and it's a, it's a checks and balances and accountabilities as well. Oh, goodness. Um, so our other thing is, is we can actually um, do comments on, on any of our programs. It's available on docs, um, slides, um, and the sheets. So um, just so that you're aware on that. The other thing I kind of talked about a little bit earlier is that any of the documents that are available, um, you can actually download in um, different versions. So if you go to the to file and download, then it'll give you a list of different um, different types of, of documents and things like that, you can download it. So like, like I was saying before, if you have a Google Docs, you can download it into Google Word um, and work on it like that, whether it is a client that wants to do that or you yourself want it in a different form, you can do that as well. So um, we talked about making things available offline. Again, that's one of my favorite things to do. If there is something that I need to work on and I'm not going to have internet access, maybe you're going on a, a trip and you're taking um, your work with you or you're writing a book and you just want to be in solitude um, to, to finish writing that, you can make that document available offline so that while you are not connected, you can go ahead and work on that document. Okay, so a recap of what we've got going on today. We talked about um, Google Meets. If you go to meet.google.com, you can go over the details of that um, and have further training into Meets 
as well. Um, the next thing is we talked about collaboration using Google Drive. Drive is a really, really cool cloud-based storage. Um, and uh, I love it because I can use it from any computer regardless of where I am. But I also love it because I can share with my business partner and my team and be able to work as though I'm right there in the office, even though I'm six hours away working on um, this project down here. It makes a really big difference. Um, and then for additional training needs, if you want to go deep dive into any of these uh, applications or processes or anything like that, you can go to grow.google.com and actually be able to get um, a lot more training on each one of these. So for some additional information, um, some additional applications, I encourage you to check out. I encourage you to check out forms. If you do any surveys, evaluations, anything like that, forms is a great digital way to be able to collect that information and then to be able to download it to say a sheets or something like that to be able to really get your data and check that out. Um, sites is a way to create a website um, or to do your portfolio if you need to highlight um, your personal work for a job, whatever that might be sites is an amazing way to create um, websites and portfolio sites. Photos, again, I could do an entire nine hour course, an all day course on photos and how to tag your people and tag your locations and, and all of that. It's amazing, amazing, especially if you work within an organization that does a lot of photos and a lot of documentation that way. Uh, YouTube. Um, I think everybody knows about YouTube and, and, and uh, we've kind of become a YouTube um, yeah, let's be honest, I, I, I joke that I get more information off of YouTube these days uh, because everybody kind of has created this YouTube channel, all of our major networks, pretty much everything is available on YouTube that you need to. And then um, we also have um, the Google Play Store. It's available that you can download any of the Google apps. So it's available on, on um, Samsung devices as well. So that is where we are at. Do we have any questions before we close out for the day? You can either come on screen. I, I love. I rather have you guys come on screen and talk, so it, it's not just my voice. But if you would rather, you can put those in the in the chat as well. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like we have any questions. We appreciate everybody taking the time to join us today. We really, I really enjoy teaching um, these classes. I'm looking forward. Mary Lou, did you have something? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Okay, <laughs> I really enjoy, I really enjoy being able to teach these classes and to, to go over the elements of Google. Uh, tomorrow night we have uh, Tuesdays with Microsoft um, and that's available four o'clock uh, and uh, really excited for that class as well. We have uh, the Microsoft training team coming in um, and teaching that one. So looking forward to that. Thanks everybody for taking the time out of your busy schedule and joining us today. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, make sure you comment down, let us know where you're joining from um, and then subscribe so that you know when we upload our next video. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Megan. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.